on a desktop. Well, it's actually a Dropbox folder, but I have a shortcut on a desktop. And over here, so I'm still supposed to move this to chapter five. I saved it outside of it. So let's go ahead and create a new folder for, well, I'm going to do that because I don't think you're, you, you're keeping, well, maybe you are. Uh, well, perhaps you are, I, I'm not sure. That's what I'm saying then. All right, so let's call this Fallen Distance. That's the folder name, and I'm going to save the file also as fallen distance.py. All right, so let's see if we have any errors. Oh, that's a previous program. Okay, so we can see that it's listing the values, right? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's correct. Now, there's a bunch of th stuff we have to do, right? We have to format it. We have to have a header to display it. So let's go ahead, when printing it, let's, before we print it, right? Let's print a header if, uh, above it, right? We can, well, if we put it in a loop, it's going to print it each time, right? So what we want to do is print it outside the loop in the main function. Call a print function that's going to display a header this way. First thing we are going to display is our, well, well, it's only a list, right? So, and, and, and that's our distance. That's our fallen distance. So we're going to say fallen distance. Well, we can actually display the time with it as well, right? We can display the time with, with it as well. So instead of just displaying the fallen distance here, okay, we can display the time as well. So the way, well, well first of all, let's go ahead and create the header. First, the first thing we want to display is the time, right? And then we can create a tab. We can create a tab Right in the display, we can we can use call use the escape character T. Okay, we can start the escape sequence backslash T, and T is an escape character. And anytime the interpreter sees the backslash T together, it doesn't print it, but rather it creates a tab in the display. Then the next thing I want to display is the fallen distance this way, so that we know the exact time and its fallen distance. All right. All right, so now we also need to display the time before the following distance, right? We can just pass in the current time because that's what's keeping track of the time. And then separate it with a comma. That's two arguments we are passing into the print function. By default, right, by default, they are separated with a space, just a space. Let's just see how it's looking now. Now you can see that we have, okay, um, before anything, current time. Okay, so I it's supposed to be current time I, I named it as carrot, carrot time. It's supposed to be carrot with n. It doesn't know what it is. So I'm going to put the n here and it runs again. Runs again. Okay. So now we can see the time here. We can see the following distance. We can see the time here, all right? One all the way to 10. We can see the format for the format, the following distance. Now, by default, when these are printed, they are separated with just a space, just a single space here. As you can see that, right? So we can add a tab ourselves. As a, as a second argument into the print function, we can create a tab backslash t like this. So it's going to, by default, when you pass arguments into the print function this way, they are displayed with a space. So they are displayed this way. So it's going to display the current time space. In this case, a tab space, well, not the space. But by default, they are displayed, they are displayed with a space. So current time space time uh, tab space the following distance Okay, that, that's how they display. They display with a space. So when I run this now, you can see they're spaced out, spaced out a little more because of the tab. And we can also add a line after it, after the header. So after it displays this, we can create a new line character here, backslash n, which basically moves the position from here, the end of the line, to the next line. So anything that comes after that new line character is displayed on that next line. In other words, these will shift down. These numbers, 1 to 10 and 4.9 all the way to 490 will shift down because there was a new line character here, it was encountered here, and that forces the, pos the position to move from this line to the next line, and anything that comes after that will be displayed on that next line, right? In this case, I'm going to put something after that, right? And this is just an to underline, well, 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 first of all, well, first of all, let me just show you this, just one, one quick underline here. And because this new line character moves into the next line, the under, the, sorry, the hyphens will also just follow, all right? And then after that, we also want to go ahead and create, well, okay, I, I wanted to create two separate underlines, but after we've displayed the underscore, we want to also cr create a new line character to move, to shift it to the next line. And anything that comes after that next line, which is the, which are, the, which are uh, these numbers will display, will be displayed on that next line. I don't know if you got it, but let me just put this here. 
and show you. All right, so this is what happened. All right, so over here, this was here. It created a new line character. It moved the position from where it's at over here, and it waited. And then there were hyphens that followed that new line character, and it printed that those hyphens. And then it, it saw another new line character, right? This is, which is the last one. So it moved the position from where it's at to the next line, right? So now, now there's, uh, there's not there's there's uh, well, well when you think about it, uh, so it moved the position from the um, so it moved. It moved it, so we saw this right after the hyphen it saw this new line character and then it moved it to the next line right but you can see there's another line here but that's because by default like you like i said the print function also ends with a new line character so after it got here after that new line character it, and it got here it by default the print function also moves to the next line so it moved another step down okay we moved the position from that from the current place to the next line again and anything that came after that was displayed on that next line so we don't really need this right that means after printing this underscore here, I mean, sorry, after printing these hyphens, the print function also by default ends with the ends of the new line, meaning it's going to move the position from where it's at to the next line. So immediately, right, immediately after that, after the hyphens, these numbers are going to be displayed. There's not going to be an extra extra new line like this. I hope you, I hope I didn't confuse you there. I just want to break this into two. This, these are the lines into two, right? So let's have let's say one, two, three, somewhere here. And then I'm going to create, um, let's say, a tab here. Maybe that's too much. Let me just click like this. Do I have to? Well, well, let's just see how it displays. Well, I can put a space. Let's see. Let's try this into. Okay, it's working. So I'm, I displayed four hyphens, and I created a tab here with this, and I displayed this. Okay, right. I got out a couple. And then by default, the print function ends with a new line character. So after it was done displaying the hyphens, it moves the position from where it at to the next line here. So the numbers follow, follow, follow it. So we can see the time in our following distance. And then you can see you know which one it corresponds to. Also, we have to format these numbers because these numbers are too long and they look, you know, they don't look really nice. So let's format all of them to two decimal places, right? And we can do that by formatting this number because this is actually this is actually the following distance. So we can format this number, right? So I'm going to call the format the format function and then surround this value around it. Now the format function takes in two arguments, right? It, uh, a couple or a couple of arguments, right? It takes in what you want to format and how you want it formatted, right? In this case, the first argument is is this. This is what I want to format. I'm going to put the comma here, and my second argument is how I want it formatted. It goes in double quotations, right? So first of all, I know those values are float, right? Floating point numbers, right? It's a float, and I want it. I want them formatted as a float, so I need to specify the type. So I'm going to type an F to represent the float. Also, I want to, I want to go ahead and format them to around them to two decimal places, and the way I do that is to specify the precision before the type. So I'm going to type in 0.2 in front of it, which means round that number to two decimal places. If I wanted to round it to three, three decimal places, I'd say 0.3 or 0.4 to four decimal places. I want it rounded to two decimal places, so I'd say 0.2, right? And that's it, right? One more thing. I am exceeding this line over here. Now this line, I don't know if you can see it, but it's like this line is a guideline for me not to exceed 80 characters on a line, right? It's a Python standard to restrict, or I mean, not restrict per se, but then to guide you. It's a good practice to actually, it's a standard to type 80 characters on a line. So this line over here is just guiding me, telling me, hey, you've, you've exceeded 80 characters on this line. So break, you know, so do something about it. If your, your code is still going to run, but like I said, it's good practice, it's good standard to do that. So because of that, I'm going to break my code into two here. I just after this comma here, I'm just going to go ahead and break it by hitting enter. Right, but before that, before you break any line on Python, you have to type type in the backslash, right, then hit enter, just like that. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and run this, and the output is here. So everything works well. We can see that they've been rounded to rounded to two decimal places as floats. All right, so we're done. All right, so if you have any questions, please comment down below, and I'll do everything to respond to them as always. Take care of yourselves. Have a good day. Have a nice time. Have a nice sleep. Enjoy yourselves. And 
I'll see you next time with the next program. All right then, bye-bye.